said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You are in the house virtually, and that is what we've come here to do, to give God praise, glory, and honor, and magnify his name. Wherever you are, I'd love for you to just get up on your feet, get comfortable. It doesn't matter. You can be in your car jamming with us. But hey, we're coming to give God glory. We've come to lift him high. Come on with us right where you are. Hey! He's a good God, isn't he? Yes, he is. Let's go. I will sing praises unto my king. Yeah. I will sing praises unto my king. Yeah. He is creator of everything. He is creator of everything. I will exalt him his name adore. Yeah. I will exalt him his name adore. Yeah. Honor and reverence for of God, right where you are, come on and get it together, let's go, praise I will offer to glorify, praise I will offer to glorify thee, and I'll declare that thy name is holy, and I'll declare that thy name is holy, be thou exalted above the Open up your mouth and bless him right where you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. We worship, we worship, we worship adore you, adore you. We declare, we declare nobody like him, nobody like him. Come on, we worship, we worship, adore you, adore hey. you. We declare, we declare nobody like him, nobody like him. Come on, we worship, we worship, adore you, adore you. We declare. Nobody like you, Nobody hallelujah. Like you. We worship we worship and we adore you, adore you. We declare, we declare. Nobody like you, Nobody like come you. on, we worship, we worship, adore you, adore you. We declare, we declare. Nobody like you, Nobody like you. come on and worship, we worship, we adore, adore you. We declare, we declare. Nobody like you, Nobody like you. come on. you up this morning, started you on your way, you ought to come and worship wherever you are, whatever be this to me, yeah, yeah, we worship, we worship, adore you, adore you, we declare, we declare nobody like you, nobody like you, come on, we worship, we hey. worship, adore you, adore you, we declare, we declare nobody like you, nobody like you, oh, we worship, we worship, somebody Nobody like you. You got to bless 
God's word for the people of faith from the book of Psalms, the prophet Isaiah, and John's gospel. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth from the wilderness and streams in the desert. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. <laughs> After saying this, he spit on the ground, <laughs> made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he said to him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and he washed and he came home seeing. Black steel in the hour of chaos, public enemy. Going out with a bang, ready to bang out. The power from the sky, from the tower, shots rang out. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. I live in southwest DC on the wharf, right in the seat of power, the capital of the greatest country on the face of this earth. Power. What is power? I could contend that the power from the sky, Chuck D wasn't quite talking about God. I could contend that though this is a great country, the seat of power doesn't have the type of power that we really need. But there is power. There's a wonderful power in the blood of the Lamb. This is Bible study, so let's open our Bibles. Isaiah 35, 5 and 6. Psalm 146, verse 8. Or the entire chapter of John 9. All about power. 
You might not find the word power in any of those scriptures, but there is power present in those scriptures. Have you ever met someone or heard something or been in a situation that completely changed your life? In John 9, the disciples were in this situation with Jesus. They run into a blind man who had been blind since birth. And the disciples asked Jesus, who sinned? Was it this man or his parents? Because he had been blind since birth. We have to really be careful about the premise of our questions. Because it really puts us into a certain place where we start to employ tools that can oppress. The tool of religious oppression is to make those in the midst of their suffering believe that it's because of their sin or something inherent in that individual or group. And with that, we have to understand that there is a certain power that is resident. So Jesus took the time to reframe the disciples' question. And the power in this situation comes when Jesus does just that. He turns the narrative of the question of why this man is blind from causation to purpose. Because there's power in this purpose. There's a huge shift in power dynamic correcting the thinking of this false dichotomy of who sinned. And Jesus opens up a greater breadth thinking from the cause of blindness to the purpose of this man's blindness. Let's take a moment to understand power in maybe a different way than we typically thought about power. Power, we tend to think about, has strength, has force. But this power that Jesus is talking about is the Greek term dunamis. Dunamis is this Greek word. It means power, but more accurately, it's an innate or inherent power, even a cosmic power. From dunamis, we get words like dynamite or dynamic or dynamo. But this dunamis power that Jesus is going to reveal makes itself known through the purpose of why this blind man was born blind. Jesus goes up to the blind man. He spits onto the dirt and mixes that saliva and the dirt to make mud. See, I used to always think this was the nastiest thing ever. Man, don't come up to me putting mud in my eye. I wouldn't want that. But Jesus knew something different. Saliva is antibacterial and contains a cell-derived tissue factor, a protein which aids in the healing process. And the dirt is the very same out of which God formed humankind. So I can imagine this mud that Jesus forms with spit and dirt has this dunamis salve that Jesus creates to heal this brother who was blind from birth. The purpose of this healing is to give glory to God. So there's no sin involved in this situation, but the glory of God is written all over this. And so what do you do when you have that kind of encounter? When you have that uh, encounter where you have individual healing and a testimony that leads to community healing? While the power of God was used to heal the man of blindness, linked to that event is the power of of testimony to foster belief. So what happens when a miracle takes place? Well, of course, the individual has some form, some, some type of healing that goes on, but people get even more entrenched in their belief or their disbelief. So when miracles happen, when testimonies come forth, people either, either believe very strongly or they retrench, they retreat and go back to what they believed at the very beginning. And what we see from the Pharisees 
is that some did not believe that he, meaning Jesus, was from God. But others asked, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? We have to understand, Jesus did everything that he heard from the Father. There was no sin in him. You see, our power is not only in our healing, but it's in the healing of our community, and it's in the worshiping of God. Interestingly, the blind man referred to Jesus as he had only heard of Jesus. Look in verse 11. But after the dunamis power of his healing, his relationship was closer to Jesus, and he says to Jesus in verse 38, Lord, I believe. There's power in healing. There's power in believing. There's power in our faith. There's power when we share our testimony. There's power when we come together in community. There's power. And it's not about how much weight we can lift. It's not about being Ghost or Tommy on a Stars series. It's not about any of that. It's not about living in D.C. for four years and moving someplace else. But it's about understanding purpose. It's about understanding who God is. It's about giving glory to God. And it's about how we believe. That we can believe that there is power. There's power when we pray. There's power when we get together. There's power when we believe in Jesus. Thank you.